and welcome back now today we're going to be looking very quickly at a means of switching a system on and off with zero current um, from an Arduino now that might include the Arduino itself because I was in an interesting conversation uh, with my brother whilst I was in Germany about Arduino deep sleep and everything else and we were talking about getting it down to like 20 microamps or something silly like that and he goes, what about the rest of the system, though, the, the screens and the sensors and whatever it is you've got connected to that system? And there was a sort of a little pregnant pause there. And we're thinking, hmm, never really gave that much thought, did we really? Yes, that we can get the Arduino down to quite a low level, especially if it's um, a bare bones Arduino. So you're not using a board like this one here. You're actually building it from scratch. Uh, because the reason being, this one has got additional circuitry on here usb circuitry and um, leds which consume power like it's going out of fashion um so we thought hmm didn't really think of that so we, i was having a think on the flight back from uh, stuttgart to england and uh, i was making a few drawings uh, as you can see at the back here and uh, i thought will this work would it work can the arduino turn itself off so what i in fact got was something like this um, I was trying a few things out. I thought, OK, so here's the Arduino. Uh, can I actually power it on with a MOSFET like this at the bottom? And that powers it on. Well, maybe, maybe. Um, or, about, or how about the other way around? If the MOSFET was at the top, i.e. interrupting the positive supply, and uh, the Arduino was at the bottom, no, that didn't work. And I think the reason that didn't work is because the Arduino is trying to power the MOSFET like this, and then that power's got to go through here again. It's all, all a bit like pulling yourself up by your bootstraps or something like that. That worked, by the way. That worked to a degree. Um, it worked in the sense that we switched the Arduino off, i.e. when the Arduino told this MOSFET to switch off. It did-ish. But there was enough leakage at this point that uh, some current still flowed through here. Mainly, it must be said, the LED on the Arduino. So maybe if this was a bare bones, you might have got away with it. But there was still, as you can imagine, if this here is is off, if this was disconnected at this point, the potential here, the Arduino's ground, would in fact be 5 volts, wouldn't it? Because it's, it's trying to get through at this point. So that was sort of successful. Oh, thank you, multimeter. Um, so then I started looking around other things could I drive the MOSFET with an NPN transistor uh, still controlling the Arduino itself or should I be using a relay that's a stupid idea because if you use a relay that's sucking power like there's literally no tomorrow that would be useless for battery operated things so the circuit I eventually came up with was this one right so here we are this is um the circuit that I ended up with. So instead of using this MOSFET here, um, I've used this now. Actually, I didn't need to, but come on to that. Um, I've changed this one now to a P-channel MOSFET, so we can actually interrupt the power into the Arduino by default. So by default, this is off this MOSFET P-channel because we've got it connected to the positive supply via the 100K resistor. And to switch it on, what we have to do is short it down here for, um, I don't know, half a second or something. And then to keep it on, the Arduino will send out a signal through any GPIO pin. I've happened to use A0 here, which is GPIO 14, simply because it was close to the edge of the circuit board I was using. No other reason. Um, and that will drive the original N-channel MOSFET. Um, I did put a 180M resistor in there. Only, well, it's sort of belt and braces, really. We didn't want anything shorting out. And there's enough current running through here to keep it on. Some people say you don't need this sort of current limiting resistor, but there we are. Um, it's held off normally by this. Well, I you chose a 4K7 resistor there. You might put a 1K or a 10K, anything really, as long as this is completely off um, when there's nothing connected to this pin, you're OK. So what happens now is um, when we connect up the power, as is like this, exactly the circuit, nothing happens the arduino is off because this has interrupted the power okay now as soon as we short this effectively the gate to ground this starts conducting the arduino springs into action and the first thing it does in fact the only thing it does in my sketch but the first thing in any other sketch we to set um, your gpio pin in this case a0 high which then turns this mosfet 
transistor fully on, which keeps this connected to ground via here. Okay, now, the reason I said I don't think we needed the MOSFET here, I simply used it because that's the one I was playing about with at the time. I'm pretty sure you could use an NPN transistor here because it's only got to keep this uh, to ground enough um, for it to remain switched on. However, at least using another MOSFET here, you're absolutely guaranteed this is going to be to the ground because the on resistance, uh, when you put 5 volts here, the on resistance of this one is 0 0.01 of an ohm. That's pretty low. Now, we're not too worried about this because there's no current passing through here, really, and it's, it's negligible. Here, though, we might be interested in what the current capability is. Um, now, when this is on, it's 0 0.05 ohm, slightly higher than this one, but still 0 0.05 at 5 volts. Well, if you do your maths, which is basically VIR, we say 5 volt divided by 0 0.05 ohms means you could theoretically pass 100 amps through that well. That's a ridiculous amount, isn't it? And anyway, the MOSFET is limited to 24 amps. Not that I don't think any of us will be using 24 amps. Not unless you've got a really big, sturdy power supply and wires to suit. But uh, anyway, what it does show is that the resistance of this is, to all extents and purposes, zero. But more to the point, we wanted the current through here, or from here really, to be zero. We didn't want any current running down here when this is off. So when the Arduino switches itself off and the rest of the system, because you power the rest of the system from the same 5 volt supply, although you can supply it with a different voltage from somewhere else, we wanted no voltage to run through here at all. So this is the circuit that um, I've got together. And, uh, well, it, it works pretty much as you expect. It's currently powered up. Um, but as you can see, nothing's on. I've got this connected onto the power supply. Let's show you what happens. The Arduino is dead, but if I push this little button here, which is hidden behind this MOSFET, that's connecting the gate to ground there, remember? On it goes. I let go. Now that was too quick. You see the way it um, started to fire up and then cut out again. That's because I've got this USB connector actually connected up to my hub. So what's happening is, as the Arduino fires up, the USB to serial converter says oh I can detect there's something on here the bootloader basically says I can detect we're connected to the computer is there a, a sketch waiting to be downloaded and all that and that takes you know a couple of seconds or so if I disconnect that as it would be perhaps in real life you wouldn't have anything connected on there and do that again you'll see that it actually latches remarkably quickly so on do you know, the best laid plans of mice and men. I'll do it just for slightly longer, okay? On. I've obviously disconnected something. What's going on? All right, let's 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 connect the output pin up correctly and the power pin. All right, let's try that again. So I press this now for a relatively short period of time. On. Let go. It's still on. Now you might see at the top here where my pointer is pointing, you might see just a vague flashing because it's sending out some messages via the serial port. In fact, it's counting down. I'll show you that later. And when it hits the zero, it's off. That's off. This is off. But what's the current consumption like? Glad you asked. Let's fire up a camera pointing at my multimeter and find out. Right, so what we've got now is a camera pointing at my multimeter, which was accurate enough to show us about... I can't remember the exact figures now, but it was a few tens of microamps for when we were doing the Deep Sleep ESP8266 and the Bare Bones Arduino. So it's it's pretty accurate. It's a Unity UT803, um, in it, and it's a pretty good multimeter, really. So we'll assume that it's accurate uh, enough for our purposes. So it's currently reading zero. So if I press the button, we should expect to see that go up to about... 20 milliamps or something like that from an Arduino. Let's have a look. Connect up. It's running and oh, a bit more actually. 30. Oh, I must have it backwards. It says minus 31. That's because I've got the leads connected back to front. Doesn't matter. So it's 30 milliamps. Uh, and when it goes off, it says zero. A true zero, not 10 microamps or 10 milliamps. Let me uh, change the settings to microamps. And you can see it doesn't change. It doesn't suddenly leap into action. Oh, yes, you've got 10 microamps there. I couldn't show that before. 
So it really is zero. Now I can't leave it on microamps because it will overload it when I next start it up. But we can see there that it really does switch itself off. Now, why is this useful? Well, obviously, um, thinking about the Amazon dash buttons, which switch themselves off at all times until you press that button, which is how all this thinking came into being, that's how they make the battery last forever, isn't it? Because it is actually off, not in a deep sleep, not in anything, it's just off. Okay, nothing, no current flying whatsoever. So I'm thinking, okay, if we have an Arduino then that's supposed to be monitoring something, but it's always off, any battery you put out there is going to last, well, the shelf life of the battery. Now, that's okay, except how do you switch this then back on? Something has got to emulate that little on-off switch I've got there, that push button, to say switch back on. Now, what could we use for that? Well, you could use, say, um, a door magnet like you have on um, burglar alarm systems on your window or door frame, something that would just... It's got to basically allow that switch to be pressed for about half a second. Let's see how quickly we can do it. That was half a second and it's and it's latched. So a magnet making making a switch on a door, you know, coming together and bang, it will be on. You could have a, a real-time clock like a DS3231 having an alarm output, say, every hour. I'm not quite sure exactly what you can program in on there. You can certainly do it daily. So if you wanted to take a measurement once a day of, say, a water tank or something, the alarm would trigger, effectively switch this on. This would run the Arduino or the ESP8266. It would do its business, log something or, or send an, uh, an email in the case of the ESP8266, whatever it needs to do, and then switch itself back off again. Forget the deep sleep. It's just off. Everything's off. Anything that might be connected to it. You know, TFT screens, sensors, water gauges, beehive counters doesn't matter it's all off now what happens then if you think well i don't want it to be all off i actually want to use deep sleep as shown in that vid there yeah, that that one on screen now look that was a a pretty good video showing exactly how low we could get that arduino uh, down to and in fact we didn't even the crystal or anything so you wouldn't use a board like this you'd use your own little printed circuit board or something i haven't done a video on those yet um, but i will do and it's basically the chip. You don't need a crystal. You don't need the two capacitors. It's just the chip with the bootloader. That's it. And that will take in deep sleep mode something like, I think it was 14 microamps, was it? I can't remember. My memory is shocking. But it was very low. But the rest of the system, of course, would still be running. Well, this is where this could really be useful. Your Arduino, in exactly the same way as it here, that orange cable, which is then connected to the green cable because it wasn't long enough, that was still connected to this, and the rest of your system would then be powered by this. The Arduino or ESP8266 or whatever your current flavor of the month microcontroller is would then go into deep sleep mode and take next to nothing. It's not quite nothing, but it would still be so low as to extend that life of the battery to unimaginable time okay i mean you're probably talking a year if you do it really well that would go to sleep the rest of the system would literally be off because this led here sort of indicates the rest of the system as well and then once in a blue moon um, everything is spring into action the arduino could in fact keep this off then until it knows there's something to do so the Arduino or ESP8266 wakes up periodically, which might be like every three hours, and go, right, is it time for me to do something? No, it isn't. Straight back into deep sleep. So you've probably used, I don't know, five milliamps for a second, and then you've gone back into deep sleep mode again. When, however, it is time to fire up and send that email, and you want, Wi-Fi all running and maybe the sensors logging something. Well, that's when the Arduino would set this high, which is the same as me pressing that, do its business, send the message, and then shut down again. And then your battery life is going to be many, many times what it would have been had you not switched off the rest of the system. Cool. Let's just walk through the circuit diagram in a tiny bit more detail, looking at those two MOSFETs. They are two MOSFETs. I No, I didn't pick them by, uh, at random. They're the ones I actually happen to have in my little toolbox, but I had them in my toolbox 
for those specific reasons, two of which you've already seen, but there's some other good things about these MOSFETs. So let's have a look at those next. Right, this is the data sheet then for the IRLZ, IRLZ44N, which is one I've used for a long time, but there are lots of others out there. But the key factor is that it must say logic level gate drive, which means the voltage coming into here, the gate, has only got to be 5 volts in order to achieve a really low resistance between the drain and the source. And that's what this bit here means. It means the resistance between the drain and the source when it's on in, is 0 0.022 ohms, which is slightly different to what I wrote down on that diagram, wasn't it? The circuit diagram, I thought it was 0 0.01. It doesn't make any difference. 0 0.02 is still very low. There are some that are lower, but then you're paying more money. Now, if you need that, if you're, you know, sucking in 10, 20 amps or whatever for a motor or something, then you'll need as low as you can possibly get here. If you can get below 0 0.01, so well and good, and you'll probably be willing to spend the money for that. But for our use, this is a cheap pound a piece, dollar and a bit um, for a MOSFET, and that is exactly perfect for Arduino use. Now, think about this for a minute, though. If you had um, a Raspberry Pi... This wouldn't be that great. In fact, it wouldn't be very good at all because you could only supply 3.3 volts at the gate. And at 3.3 volts, you won't be getting anything like this because this would be operating in its linear mode. And it would, I don't know, it might have a resistance of something like 10 ohms at that point. Okay, now 10 ohms in that circuit uh, which you saw, now that one, would make no difference at all because all it's doing is bringing. A, the gate of another MOSFET to ground. But if you were trying to put power through it, 10 ohms would give you a huge amount of heat. So that is not what you want. You'd have to actually switch this gate on using um, a bipolar transistor, a standard MPN transistor. Right. But for Arduino use, this is perfect. Do not get fooled into buying something that does not say logic level gate drive. Normally it says logic level 5 volt gate drive. And you can always check, but whatever MOSFET you think you, you're going to need, uh, scroll down the data sheets until you get to that RDS on, which is always hidden somewhere. Here it is. RDS on, static drain to source on resistance. Okay, now we're saying we've got 5 volts. It's this one in the middle. And it says the resistance is 0 0.25. This is when you're sucking out 25 amps, which we're not from that thing. Okay, now it does drop to 0 0.22 if you put 10 volts in that gate, but you, we haven't got 10 volts and we don't need to. At 5 volts, it's as about switched on as you can get. Even at 4 volts, look, it's then the resistance is 0 0.35, which is not bad at all. Just bear in mind that when you're on those Chinese or eBay sites looking for your MOSFETs for Arduino use, it must say logic level or 5 volt gate voltage or gate drive in this case okay now also the other thing to remember is this has got a maximum voltage here of 55 volts which is normally plenty for arduino use but you never know your particular requirement might be to drive a, a 60 volt motor say well this isn't going to be good enough then is it you'd have to be a bit more specific but for general use this is great now the p channel one that um, i had in my toolbox uh, was this one here it's an ndp 6020p and they're pretty cheap as well so this being a p level everything's minus right so it's not 24 amp capability it's minus 24 amp but the bit once again we're interested in this is in this is interesting because it's on the very first page here rds on at minus 4.5 or we're going to minus 5 effectively is 0 0.05 right and well that's that's the information that you need on this one just remember that the drain and the source are reversed on this one and the gate has to be brought low to make it switch on so as you bring it high it switches off okay it's probably why people don't like uh, pnp transistors as well as well as p channel mosfets because it's all backwards in your brain it doesn't doesn't quite gel anyway Here's all the parameters and stuff. Uh, let's have a look. Nothing on here. It's probably a bit further down. RDS. Here we are. RDS on again. And exactly what we just read, really, basically. Okay. So once again, logic level gate drive. Um, in this case, remember this case, it's it's always negative, but you've still got to make sure it's logic level. Does it say? Yes, it does say logic level. Look, big and bold in the title. 
great don't buy stuff that doesn't say that otherwise you think it works and it will work even supplying five volts or so but you'll be in the linear region of that mosfet and it will get hot very quickly you just have no you won't get the advantages of a mosfet right enough of this back to the circuit right this is the the circuit again i've just been looking on the internet actually for one of those um transistors this one here this transistor here um, now i've got down here actually irl3705 which is suddenly different from what did i have before irlz44n i've probably got both in my little box and i've been mixing them up as i've been drawing it out so this one is also got a gate level uh, logic level gate on this one and i've just had a look on um, aliexpress of all places just to have a look you know and see how much they were so if we go over to the browser here we are now this is a whole gamut of different ones you can get here the ones we're interested are irl 3705n now that's that's that one there now for four pieces one pound 32 which is i don't know about 160 perhaps dollars american dollars something like that but for four pieces that's even cheaper and i thought I'm, i could have sworn i spent nearly a pound a piece on these going back but then that was probably two or three years ago when i bought my last lot what was the other one it was um irlz irlz can't see it no but that it's not to say you can't get it very easily now this is the n channel the p channel the one I was using was an NDP 6022P. So let's just copy that into AliExpress and see what they got. And they say, really? Is that correct? 10 pieces for 128 the lot which is 10 pieces in a lot which is 12 pence each um i'm sorry to look so surprised but i didn't get them for that okay it's been a while since i've bought mosfets but let's just click on that and make absolutely sure because if it's true i think i might get some more actually oh now here's an important thing to remember mosfets are very static sensitive do not handle them do not touch them now i've got one over here here we are now if i show you this one on the main camera so these are put into um sort of uh there's a conductive carbon foam okay to stop any static building up on the gate now i don't know which ones these are these are f12 ntls and same now i don't know that these are logic level or not but i've destroyed more than one mosfet simply by touching the gate you don't want to do that when you're building a circuit like this whether it's on um, strip board or um, breadboard like this one is underneath here okay put that in at the last possible moment and then when you do put it in make sure at least you have the positive supply and the negative or ground connected up with the resistor from the gate to the ground or the resistor from the gate to the positive supply before you start plugging these in and these are quite tight to say the least you really have to work these into the board because the pins are quite chunky because they could be taking quite a bit of current so they can be quite tricky to put in but do not under any circumstance touch the gate and that applies to both these it's the gate on here and the gate on here basically fingers off pretend it's a, a static sensitive ic you can get a, a wrist thing for your an earthing loop for your wrist you put it around your wrist a uh, big long wire and it goes into the earth socket on your main supply your power into your house um, i've used them in the past i I found them awkward actually because then you've got this thing haven't you trailing on your wrist and it's it's just awkward i just try and be a bit more careful these days about what i'm touching on these things in fact even though these are in these carbon conducting foams i'm not going to touch them at all now they might arrive um like this which is a static sensitive bag it's got some foam in it as well actually um don't get them out and shake them all over the table and pick them up because once again you'll probably destroy them keep them in the bag 
if you do touch them just hold the tab the tab incidentally is quite often connected to the drain on the um, actual transistor itself so the center pin the drain which in the, an N channel is connected to the plus voltage means sometimes you can't if you're going to put them on a heat sink you shouldn't have to but if you did um, you don't want to start shorting out the drains so they have to be insulated in some way okay so there's just a couple of handling issues you have to be aware of for MOSFETs but they really are a magical item the fact you can they they basically act as a switch um, and when you think about a standard on off mechanical switch is that going to go down below 0 0.01 ohms resistance probably not right um, I think we've done the browse a bit then yeah I'm definitely going to investigate that further though because if that's 10 pieces for those I think I might buy some of those I'll see what prices are on um, other sites as well eBay Banggood places like that okay well I'm going to leave you with a, a very very quick further demo of this and we can explore this perhaps in a little bit more detail in the real project as time moves on but at the moment everything's off let me switch the um, current monitor back on which is this one here and the meter's gone off so let me turn that back on right so it's milliamps and just to prove that on microamps still says zero okay so press the uh, press the switch there it is and 10 seconds later it'll all go off I'll just show you the the simple sketch that I've on it's it's, it's a non nonsense sketch all it does is set that um, thing high and count down now remember what I said though when I connect this up it's going to take a lot longer for it to latch because the bootloader is doing quite a bit now it's a little bit tricky uh, recording this because obviously I've got to get my finger on the button to uh, enable the Arduino board so it shows up in the serial ports and I can grab it uh, here as part of the the debugging window as soon as I let my finger go though uh, that little LED will go out because the Arduino has finished its little countdown and everything and everything will go blank so let's just talk through the code first so I can take my finger off this button because it's really hurting now Ooh. right oh, there's a big dent in my finger see right let's have a look at this um, simple bit of code but is this the foundation by which you know you can build upon right I've defined my power pin as a uh, zero you could say 14 there by the way it would work in fact 14 works well in Eclipse Eclipse doesn't know what a zero means has never been defined for some obscure thing only when you're doing um, an analog read so uh, you you would want to use 14 there but in Arduino IDE they're more forgiving and they're helpful so a zero you can use any GPIO pin you want incidentally but in some ways it's useful to use the analog pins a zero to a five as GPIO pins because you probably want some of the others for other things now remember that if you have a board with a6 and a7 on it which some Chinese clones give you as added value and indeed nanos give you anyway you can only use those for analog inputs you cannot use those as GPIO ports okay so added value yes but there is a caveat there so you can use uh, a0 to a5 for standard GPIO starting at 14 15 16 and so forth okay so I'm using a0 simply because it happened to be on the right side of the board for me that's all no other reason as you can see it's over here rather than right over the other side and I'm going to drag a cable over so all I'm doing here is uh, setting the output power pin to output before um, I set it to high so it's it's always on effectively okay as soon as this thing starts up it goes right the very first thing I'm going to do is make sure the power stays on to the Arduino itself and then all I do in this little loop here is do a little countdown to 10 9 8 7 6 whatever when it gets to zero in other words when that while condition uh, is no longer true it comes down here and says right low to that power pin which then switches off the MOSFET and that's it turns itself off which now as I said before if you have your USB port connected it does take an appreciable amount of time like two three seconds before it latches because the USB um, is is doing some stuff or perhaps I should better say the bootloader is doing some stuff talking via the USB to the IDE going have you got anything for me 
is there a sketch for me please am i supposed to be doing something at this point and when nothing happens it goes oh okay then i'll just carry on but that takes a couple of seconds so i'm going to have to keep my finger on the old switch here uh, a little bit longer okay it's not that instant uh, switch on so watch the output uh, window i'm hoping this is going to work actually so i'm going to switch it on windows acknowledged there's a new port just appeared out of nowhere and nothing's happening because now this is the problem you see the debug window i had open previously is no longer connected to the new instance of that port in fact it, there's a message coming up saying board 15 not available well it is available now because i've got my finger down there but not of course once i've let go and restarted it so what i'm going to do is shut the debug window and then i'll start up a new instance as soon as i've heard that windows has enumerated that device so press the button and it's there and the debug windows up there it goes and i can let go and all that's going to do is count down and when it gets to zero watch the lights on the led down here off there we are simple as that simple isn't it really now as i said we could use this not to power down the arduino but to power down everything else with a different voltage set as well because not everything runs on five volts so what would the circuit diagram look for that simplicity itself let's have a look at that now and just wrap this video up right this is the original circuit diagram then everything running from five volts so the the mosfet that actually switches the five volts on and off um, goes to the arduino and indeed everything else in fact what we should really be drawing on here um, sort of there really is a 5 volt out for everything else now the thing is if you don't want 5 volts out you want it 12 out and you want the arduino still to control that but go into deep sleep mode and so forth all that is very possible if we look at the slightly modified one circuit that is like this so the arduino now is permanently powered from 5 volts okay and this can go into deep sleep now and effectively is never switched off apart from the deep sleep this could be an esp8266 as well no problem with that okay now the gpio still goes into that same uh, n channel mosfet here and switches this one off in exactly the same way but if you notice the power now from this one is supplied i've said 12 because it's a common value but i guess it could be anything else up to I think it was 55 on that spec sheet. I won't go too high though. If the spec sheet says, that's a tongue twister. If the spec sheet says 55 volts maximum, I wouldn't take it any higher than 50. And remember, at that voltage, at any appreciable current, you still have to check whether this or not this is getting hot, even if it's 0.02 ohms or whatever. But anyway, 12 volts I've said here. Everything else is the same. We're still holding it off. You might want to change the 100k to. I don't know a 220k or something because um, all it's got to do is hold this positive okay you're still gonna short this to ground initially to start it up if you need to all right remember the arduino though is in charge now so if you want the arduino to do this function then you need to have something built into here rather than into here but this will prove that this works okay this switch so when all this, either via here, so this gets switched on here, or it goes via here switched on, you'll get your 12 volts out at this point here. And because the resistance is so low, as we've already discussed, you'll have the full 12 volts and the full amperage as well. So that's how I would do the uh, different supplies. Now, what you must do, of course, if you see down the bottom, the ground wire here, is common because we must have a common ground for the, all the currents to go back to where they need to go back to so comments thoughts please put them into the video below all this um, i do try and reply to every single one i think that just about covers it really i'll leave you leave you with a view of the actual circuitry very simple just watch the handling of those mosfets all right see you in the next video thanks for watching i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.